Hello everyone, it's Sue here, Pavlova Fowl, and I'm asking for help in dealing with foxes. As you know, every year we look after our neighbours' small holding while they are away, and they've had a bit of a problem with foxes before they went. They've put a huge two metre high fence up, and they still had a problem, so they've added a leaning top to it to stop the fox jumping. But unfortunately, it's a water meadow, and the fox has found a way of digging a hole underneath. It's very soft soil, and recently we had quite a bit of rain so it was an easy task and unfortunately the fox has made off with eight of his meat birds and also there was one buried in the compost heap so they obviously had the intention of coming back and collecting that one. The thing we're amazed at is how little is left of these nine birds. There's, not, there's nothing, there's no blood, there's nothing. There's just a little pile of feathers where each one was sadly dispatched. He carried away eight of them. Maybe uh, I had a word with my father, who used to be a farmer, and he was saying that when they're really hungry, the cubs will come down and hunt with the mother, they may not partake in it, they may have actually been the other side of that hole over there, but they'll be waiting and therefore they can carry off a lot more. Ironically, and in a strange coincidence, my sister lost six hens at almost the same time and on the same day as we did here. She's in Scotland and it seems to be that time of year when they've got cubs, they're going to risk more she had, as I say, six large ex-battery hens carried off from Woodlands and she'd just arrived just as they'd been killed. It was too late. She didn't hear anything, but they were still warm, so that was rather sad. And it carried off so many and killed the rest, intending to come back. And if we go further over into this field, we'll see what happened here, is that they carried off eight and they buried one. And they did start to make another larder as well. We'll have a look at that too. So here are the escapees and they're looking a bit fed up. They're actually waiting by the door expecting to come out into the big field but there is no way we're going to do that because it's still too dodgy that the fox could come back. So until such time, chaps, I'm afraid you're going to have to stay there and make do with just looking out at the sheep. such a peaceful beautiful place and the problem is also that normally when our neighbours go away they leave their dog and a um, bit of a neighbour with argument over the dog barking and they've given it to their cousin to look after and he takes it away although he does bring it back because he comes to water the garden but if the dog had been there I don't think this would have happened certainly not in broad daylight Four o'clock in the afternoon was when it happened. And it was quick and nobody heard anything. So we're doing the dog deterrent first. We've got Kenai, she's come back with the cousin who's watering the garden. She's going to do the tour and she's also going to perhaps, because she's a hunting dog, she's probably going to show us if there's any more ways in which the fox has been in. To give us an idea. Mm -hmm. She can smell something there. This is the most likely area it comes in because there's the wood over there in the distance. You can see it's very beautiful. Very wild and beautiful. So you can get an idea of the height of the fence here. It's, uh, it's quite a leap to get over there. So it's obviously better to come underneath. Okay, we're now on to phase two. And uh, this is the urine deterrent. 
and we're just going to put that in areas because there are quite a few brambles around here where the fox couldn't get through so we're just going to put it in the areas where we think he could easily dig underneath. The idea is that we'll put it here to start with because this is where he or she may come back because it's the area where they've already made the hole. Although I just put big stones but if they get a whiff of that I don't think they're going to bother. This area looks a bit more vulnerable because it's just tall grasses there whereas the other side is all brambles. We're going to have to go into mass production. Maybe we're going to have to get some beer or something. If it works, it'll be great. Birds do get a bit blase. If they don't get attacked the first time, I found that with a cat walking through our garden, the first time like it's a terrific row, and when nothing happens, the next time it goes through, it's, it, they do make a noise, but it's, it's not as intense. So, big problem. And uh, it will be great. If any of you have any ideas, please put them in the comments, or you can message me, but putting them in the comments would be really great because that will help other people and I'm sure this time of year it's a common problem. Okay, thanks for that everybody and thanks for watching. Thanks for all your support. It's really appreciated. So do you think this is going to work? Is it going to be strong enough? I don't know. I can't smell anything.